Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello and welcome to our 10th episode uh, of our series Islamic Finance with Sheikh Shadi as Suleiman from Sydney, Australia, researcher in this field. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa wa rahmatullahi. We talked about concepts of Islamic economics, uh, financial com uh, uh, the components of financial transactions in Islam, the principles um, uh, Islam uh, 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 abides by when it uh, 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 rules on um, issues involved in this field, uh, riba and the importance of staying away from riba, the difference between Islamic banking and the traditional Western uh, uh, banking with all its virtual components that uh, you know faltered during this crisis. We're seeing now the world trying to regulate uh, um, uh, the way banks uh, work. We talked about Islamic uh, financing in the field of uh, mortgage, uh, uh, stock market ethics uh, uh, as far uh, as uh, trading in the market goes, uh, insurance and how Islam views it and also monopoly uh, and how uh, Islam uh, rejects it. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about more uh, ethics and, and values and morals we uh, Muslims uh, should abide by when dealing um, with auctions, uh, when dealing with uh, uh, tender offers uh, or uh, take over bids and um, uh, things uh, in, um, uh, in the market. Sheikh, uh, auctions are uh, really sometimes um, uh, so um, deceiving. Uh, you could have a group of, uh, of people uh, who want to, you know, uh, drown somebody else, so they would make fake bids uh, until they reach a certain price, and then, you know, they give it to a third party, perhaps, that, that, that drowns. That, one form of, of trickery in, in, in auctions. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasulullah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَلَا تَنَاجَشُوا Another hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عَنِ النَّجْ The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, forbid the Najj. And what's the, uh, what's the Najj, or وَلَا تَنَاجَشُوا And do not commit Najj between one another. It means, Najj means deception. And it's more of deception in auctions. Where the auctioneer will agree with someone uh, to come uh, on the floor and just to increase the prices without an intention of buying it, just for the sake of increasing the price. So others continue to increase the price. Maybe it's a, it's a product that uh, there's not much interest in it, and it's worth uh, 100, and you've, got some, uh, and you've got the company or the auctioneer will agree with um, someone to come and increase the prices, not for the intention of buying it, and this is what the scholars define it, not for the intention of buying it, just for the intention of increasing the price. This is, of course, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi describes that as ghish, which is deception, cheating, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi forbid that. And if such thing happens like that, you have the right to return the product. So if I have been deceived by someone else, by, by me trying to buy something, and someone else just putting the price up on me, just for the sake of putting the price on me, I have the right in the Sharia to, uh, to return and, uh, and, and, and take back my money that I paid. Why? Because this is deception, and obviously, unfortunately, you find this, these things exist in the auctions, in the, mm. in the environments of auctions. That's one. Not only that, but a lot of deception and lying. Mm. You know, because uh, a lot of the auctioneers these days make uh, the product so quick that I want you to see the product, mm. or they tell you about a product that's not clear. Mm. And we mentioned before that when I buy something, I must have enough knowledge of it. Mm. I must have enough enough knowledge of it, and uh, and that's why the scholars, some of the scholars, have another condition called khiyar al ru'ya. Khiyar al ru'ya means the the option and the chance of uh, taking back or returning or refunding what I bought after I see it. So, for example, I agree with you to buy a car, but I haven't seen that car, and I agree to pay ten thousand dollars for the car that you described to me. I have the rights that once I see that car. And it's not in accordance to the description they described to me to take my money back. This is the Sharia. This is the this is this is exactly what we mentioned before. Minimizing the risk. I, I can buy something based on description, no problems. In the Sharia, it allows us to buy something based on description. But if it's not in accordance to the description that was described to me at the first moment I see it, then I have khiyar al ru'ya, which means I have the right to take it, to, to refund it or return it back because it was not in accordance to the description. So same thing, you find that in the auctions. You know, you find the auction, it gets up, maybe shows some photos, and this is the car or this is the product or this is the uh, house that we want to sell, such, such, such. Best of descriptions when you come to see it. Well, 
It is something totally opposite to the description that was described after you've paid. It, it does happen a lot, and, and, and surprisingly enough, you could even see governments uh, trying to uh, make a, a propaganda campaign for a certain product or a license uh, for uh, the production of a certain um, material. Uh, and, 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 and the government knows at this moment you know, that this is not really uh, attractive, uh, but the government needs money. So it just offers the license and makes propaganda uh, for it via its media channels. Everybody goes in uh, you know, rushing to, to, get, to go there first, and you get the license and you discover that you, you've just been drowned. And, and you could also see it in, even in IPOs uh, uh, in uh, the stock market. You make a, prob a certain company makes a propaganda about its, it, its um, uh, product or its stock. And then, uh, you know, the, those uh, who entered the IPO discovered that this is not at all what they were uh, That's why the they were cheated on, on That's on why the, the Sharia gives you here the option of refunding what you bought. Once you see it, if it's not in accordance to the description that it was described. But in nowadays, I mean, when Sharia is yeah, not, we're, we're it doesn't about, really that's rule we're talking in, in about, most Muslim countries, yeah, well, what can, can those people do? See, this is do? the problem. We're talking about Islamic finance, and this is what the Islamic ruling is. But uh, and, unfortunately, because many of our governments, many of the systems out there, is not in accordance to Islam, that's why we see the repercussions that we are facing these days, and the deception, and uh, and you know the 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 the, the evil. The media is being used as a, as an amazing tool for, you know, for helping the the, the deceivers. See, marketing is a good tool, but as a Muslim, I should be honest in what I market. If uh, I should be clear in what I sell, I cannot uh, say something that's not there. I can't say that you know this is, uh, car is worth ten thousand; it's only worth five thousand. I should be honest. And when we're talking about auctions, this is the Islamic perspective when it comes to auctions. Uh, the auction it must be very clear, it must be honest, it uh, describes it in accordance to its description. And, uh, and if the buyer buys something from the auction and later on realizes it, that it's not in accordance to the description was described, then the, you, by the Islamic law... You know, everything uh, you're saying, Sheikh, means that we do need uh, more um, courts, um, 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 uh, um, uh, e economic Sharia courts. Yes, I mentioned before that uh, in the past, it was the duty of the governor to establish a, a court in the middle of the market. This is an Islamic court based on transactions. And he'll assign a judge who is specialized in this field. And all he does is make the rulings and the judgments according to the Sharia ah based on dealings and transactions. And this is what you found in the past in every market. In every city, you'll find that. But unfortunately, when we've drifted away from the Sharia ah, and uh, we start to follow other systems, this is the situation that we're in now. Mm. Um, and now, um, uh, a question about those who aid uh, uh, those who want to make a propaganda for their uh, item. Uh, uh, for instance, I'm, I'm working in the field of media and I'm assisting this company or that uh, you know, in, in, in making um, uh, advertisements for, for its components. But I know that these ads are, decept uh, um, um, are deceiving the, 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 the consumers. Uh, what's the, what, what, what would the Sharia uh, rule on me? If I know that uh, I yes. am involved yes. with a company that's deceiving mm -hmm. and I'm just a tool, yes. You know, I'm a slave or a tool or employee to deceive, then I'm a deceiver too. Mm. You know, anything that leads to haram What if I don't haram. know, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doubtful? Okay, if you're doubtful, then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, uh, mm. uh, and you should leave the doubtful matters. The halal is clear and the haram is clear. Mm. And between them, there are doubtful mm. matters. And the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam said, these doubtful matters are haram, mm. they should keep away from. Mm. So if I'm doubting this, I should keep away from it. Mm. And one of the beautiful principles that I would like to advise our viewers and every Muslim and brother and sister out there, that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us a beautiful principle. And he said, ma yaribuka ila ma la yaribuk. Leave what's doubtful to matters that are not doubtful. And this beautiful principle is based on all day-to-day -day life things. Not only when it comes to transaction, when it comes to dealings, when it comes to socializing, when it comes to buying, when it comes to selling, when it comes to every single thing that we interact in life. Anything that you doubt, keep away from it. 
and go for something that you do not doubt. And that's why a lot of times when you get to the market, you are so doubtful in a lot of things. You are doubtful whether you buy from him or from buy from there or buy from this job, or you are doubtful whether this is the best thing for you or not. Anything that's doubtful, leave it. And go for something that's not doubtful. The problem, Sheikh, is that there are a lot of doubtful things. And this, so that's why we try our best to get to the less doubtful matters. Mm. Indeed. It's not easy. Of course it's not easy, but this is the advice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi And as I mentioned, because the lack of morals, the lack of the Islamic ethics, the lack of Islamic manners, this is where we resorted to. We live at this time and era where the corruption is so, exceeded so much that our lives, our lives are not in the best form or in a, not in the best happy way that we want it because of corruption mm -hmm. in all aspects, whether it's in social life, in a business life, in a family life. Once we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah makes, you know, Allah brings back the blessings. You know, even talking about on a social life, you know, there's a disaster happening in many houses, Muslims and non-Muslims. Why? Because we're away from the deen. And when we talk about economy, look at the economy state that we're in. Look at the, you know, the, the world that we live in because we are far away from Islam. Mm -hmm. The rich is just becoming a lot more rich and the poor is becoming a lot more poor. And the number of the rich people are very, very minimal in comparison with the number of the poor people. As I mentioned before, that 80% of the resources of this world are consumed by 20% of the population of this world. I'm and the 20% if, if we sit, um, uh, if Allah gives us, uh, um, uh, uh, extends our lives uh, 10 more years, we could be sitting 10 years from now and saying 90% of the, of, yeah. of, 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 of the global wealth is with 10% of, yes. of the people and And 20% and vice versa. of the right. resources and then 99% is assumed by 80% of that. Of that. that is so. that justice? That's not justice. Mm -hmm. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not look at a someone, a Muslim, that his neighbor slept and he was hungry. Look, look at the solidarity and the, and the humanity concern that Islam forces on you. And that neighbor, let it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, let it be Christian or Jewish or a Buddhist or atheist, let it be whoever he is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not look at this person if he knows that his neighbor slept and he's hungry, you know. And this is, you know, you've got all these neighboring countries that are, are, are dying from starvation, and we are just consuming, you know, uh, consuming their resources because we live uh, in a first world country or, or another world. And the system that does not give justice to those. And maybe the resources that might have is a lot more than the resources that you have. But it's all consumed unjustly because we're not following the Islamic system. Subhanallah. Sheikh, dear viewers, we'll be taking a break here. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the ethics, um, the morals and the values uh, in auctions, uh, tender uh, offers and, and, and takeover bids in the world of Islamic uh, finance. Stay with us. There are 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. 500 million of them live as minorities in 149 countries around the globe. How can the Muslims be involved in society um, and at the same time be committed to their religion? What kind of lives do they live? What are the challenges that face Muslims living in non-Muslim communities? It is a challenge, yes. For Muslims who live in the West, it is a challenge, yes. When you find yourself live in some area, you don't hear the azan as you hear it in the Middle East. Mm. You, don't, uh, you don't find people are able to go for the congregation prayer as, as it is very much common in the Muslim countries. Uh, when you go to any, any store and you, you're going to make sure that the food that you are taking is halal, this is a challenge. Mm. When you find that there is no Islamic school to find your, your kids or, to, or a sheikh, somebody who going to teach your kids Quran. What are the social, political, and economic problems that such Muslims face? How we should be interacting with our non-Muslim neighbors as a Muslim minority. How do they perceive their strengths and weaknesses? And alhamdulillah, wherever we go, every spot in the world I can tell, you can find a Muslim family lives over there. Yeah, when you walk <coughs> and you find suddenly somebody is addressing you. Assalamu alaikum, brother. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, in France, officially, there are now between six and seven million Muslims actually living in France. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I think in the UK, officially between three and four million. Join Abdullah McIntosh, 
who hosts Imam Rifat Muhammad, Imam of the Islamic Center of Barrie, Canada. They are going to discuss the challenges of Muslim minorities around the world in straight path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh Shadi, um, in today's world we see a lot of um, uh, auction forms, hidden auction forms, even in our day-to-day -day, uh, life that, uh, you know, some of us practice and perhaps we are unaware of it and, and perhaps we, we should be more aware. I could go and, and, and be trying to, uh, to park my car. I see another car trying to park. So I just wave to the, uh, to the guy, you know, hel helping uh, direct the traffic and, and, and t you know, signaling to him that I'm, I'm going to give you five or ten pounds or whatever so he brushes that guy off and I am parking instead and we can see it in everyday life I want my son to go to a, a, a certain training uh, uh, session and there is no places there so I offer more money so that I would get him uh, that place w would that be a, a prohibited form of auction okay. no this is not auction this is what we call bribery mm. bribery is rushwa. Mm. And the rushwa is something that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu forbid. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, you know, give him rushwa is your way to the hellfire. Mm. You know, this is a more or less of the hadith, mm. giving something under the table, mm. okay, for the sake of getting an extra benefit than others, okay, it's something forbidden. And the scholars define rushwa is taking a right of someone else through money. Money. Okay, this is the this is the definition. Or a gift, of the, or a, or a, a gift or anything. Right. Rashwa could be anything. Right. Could be money. Could be gift. Could be uh, an agreement. Could be whatever. And the most common one that, uh, for example, you know, uh, w what happens when a court system where I know I am in the wrong, and I know that uh, my, the defender or the, uh, the the other side is is in the right, and I give the judge money so he could. Uh, Make the judgment in my favor. Mm. This is or no give so, somebody money to uh, to uh, for, to be a shahid zur. So yeah. here we would have a rashi, a murtashi, and mm. a shahid zur. Shahid zur, yeah, that's another one. But uh, another this is one the main, the You know, this is the this is the main meaning or the major meaning or definition of rashwa. But in all matters, like you mentioned, I'm going to the car. Uh, I'm in a car park, and uh, someone is waiting to in line to park their car, or someone is waiting in line in the hospital, and then they jump the queue by paying the guard a certain amount of money while others have been waiting there for hours mm. and he just comes minutes ago. That's not morally, it's not accepted. Mm. Your fitra, your natural instinct, instinct mm. rejects that. And secondly, Islamically, is not, uh, it's not accepted. Uh, unfortunately, it does happen you know, a lot. Look at the morals of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam when he was in the battle of Badr. There was one camel for three companions. So one camel for three people. And every three Muslims or every three companions will ride on one camel. And one camel could only hand one, handle one person. So they'll rotate. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and he's the messenger of Allah, the head of the army, the leader, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was rotating with two other companions. So the two other companions said, oh, messenger of Allah, you ride and we'll continue walking. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, you are not better than me to get the rewards and I'm not better than you to ride by myself. Allahu Akbar. Look at the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, no favorism to himself at any mm. way or any form. Mm. So this is where you find, and this is the corrupt system, where for example, there's a tender and you pay a bribery to get that tender. This is haram. You know, and the money that you've earned through that is haram. This is the other point. The money that you've earned through rushwa, through bribery is also haram. And the food that you eat from behind that money and your kids are all haram. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, anybody that grows on the haram, then the hell fire is for them. And um, the problem with the tenders and the auctions and, and, and the takeover bids is that a lot of, um, unfortunately, inside information is, is being leaked out here and there. So what about those who, who leak the informations, who leak the secrets, who, who aid uh, with uh, inside information or use uh, inside information? Obviously, the one that leaked the information has a benefit. Mm. He's, he had leaked the information because he wants to get a benefit mm. or because it's someone close to him. Mm. Of course, this is deception. 
This is haram once again. It's not acceptable in any form or manner. And the Sharia rejects that because you are deceiving others. This is cheating. You're not honest. Mm. You know, you are, you know, this is, uh, you know, you're showing something to people and you are uh, producing this uh, tender. And then from behind the scenes, you are taking that tender to yourself or to someone that benefits. This is close to bribery, if not bribery within itself. And it's haram. Mm. And the money that's earned through that is also haram. Mm. And, and, and if the, in the pamphlet that you laid out to the people, uh, you have, uh, 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 100 items and, and one of them you know that it's uh, uh, is not accurate or is totally uh, uh, wrong then that would be a form of um, deception, of, uh, of, course. deception. Yeah, of course I have mm. to be honest as you're I not going to say well I told them about 90% of the truth I told them 99% there's no such of thing the there's no such thing in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that one person might say a word that they don't think it means any harm it's so little to him. That word will take him into the hellfire for 70 years. Someone might think, think this word is so little. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says that, that honesty, honesty, and this is a very nice hadith, honesty leads to birr, to goodness. And goodness leads to the paradise. And the person will continue to be honest until he's recorded with Allah as an honest person. And kathab leads to fujur, to corruption. And fujur, corruption leads to the hellfire. And someone will continue to lie until he's recorded with Allah Azza wa Jal as a liar. And unfortunately, you find that a lot in the markets. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes the markets as the most disliked places to him because of that. Because of that lying. I can't say I've been honest 99%. I have to be honest 100%. This is the quality of a Muslim. A Muslim does not lie. A Muslim is always honest. Indeed, Sheikh. And... Um I guess also as, as we are approaching here close to this episode, um, there is also that uh, other great hadith that, that uh, you know, where um, uh, Allah uh, stresses the uh, importance, um, you know, of, uh, of seeking halal uh, in our money, that at the end there are a few things that we, 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 uh, uh, the first things that uh, will be asked about, uh, one of them is, uh, uh, the first, one of the first things that Allah will question us in the hereafter, where did you get that money from? And where did you spend that money in? And Allah Azza wa says, وَلَا تَأْكُلُ أَمَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ Do not eat your wealth between one another through corruption, through falsehood, through lying, through deception. Batil means all that type of forms of deception, lying, cheating and so on. Fima and Faqah, we also want to know uh, 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 here uh, where we should spend. Spending our money, our money should be only spent in what pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Muhammad said, there are, to, there are people from our nation, they, uh, they, are, they spend their money in a foolish way, in a wrong way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast them in the hellfire. My money must be spent in a proper and accurate and acceptable way. Such as I cannot spend my money in gambling, I can't spend money, my money in alcohol, I can't spend my money in bribery, I can't spend my money uh, to the haram, I can't spend my money into clubs. These are the places that I cannot spend my money. I should use my money wisely. I use it for what pleases Allah Azza wa Jal or the ways and the forms that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet wasalam, said, the best of dollar is a dollar that you spend on your family. You know, you have people who are so attached to drugs and gambling, they'll spend every dollar they have and would not even bring a carton of milk to their house because of such, you know, dirty and filthy and corrupt actions. And this is where Allah will ask these people. What, what about moderation also, Shaykh, in, uh, in spending? I guess moderation is also a key value in, in our great religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا And do not, you know, spend and ever exaggerate in spending. إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ Those who spend or ever exaggerate in spending. Mubadhir is someone who ever exaggerate in spending. Is the, you know, the other brothers or the other allies of the shayateen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even calls the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah Azza wa Jalla even orders the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Don't be too tight and don't be too, uh, don't, don't be too generous in, uh, or don't be too open Not generous maybe, don't be too, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most generous Subhanallah. But don't be too open in right. spending right. We, we need to moderate we can't so we have to plan for tomorrow as we well we have to and plan have to... and the prophet muhammad sallam also says in another hadith take advantage of five before five take advantage of your wealth ghinaka 
قبل فقرك take advantage of your wealth before your poverty mm. so as a Muslim I should be moderate in my spending I shouldn't just because Allah is giving me a lot of wealth I spend it and I just throw it anyway you know like uh, like in you know, a foolish spender I spend mm. it in a in a moderate way I buy what's sufficient for me what's sufficient for my children and at the same time I donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of spending is spending on your family and spend in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. moderation is a very important thing in a Muslim life um, Sheikh Shadi al Suleiman uh, from Sydney, Australia, researcher in the field of Islamic economics. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward uh, to the upcoming episodes in Huda TV series on Islamic finance. Dear viewers, uh, do stay with us. We've talked in the previous episodes about the concepts of uh, Islamic economics, the f components of the financial deals in Islam, the principles um, uh, uh, Islam uh, v uh, uh, rules on. Uh, stay, the importance of staying away from Riba Sheikh um, uh, Shadi uh, re reminded us every single episode that Allah has uh, promised war on those who practice riba. The difference between um, uh, the Islamic banking and uh, the traditional Western uh, uh, banking of nowadays uh, with all its virtual uh, components. Um, Islamic financing and, and mortgage, uh, stock market ethics, insurance, uh, and, and how Islam forbids it uh, um, uh, in its form, uh, in its uh, traditional form of, uh, of nowadays, a monopoly and how our great religion uh, combats it. And we talked uh, in this uh, episode about ethics, morals and values and auctions, tender offers and uh, uh, take over bids and, and how uh, no one should use inside information uh, and how this uh, issue is so dangerous because it, o it always uh, is linked with uh, a Rashi, a Murtashi and uh, uh, probably as well a uh, uh, forged uh, testimony or uh, uh, Shahadat Zur. Um, we still have uh, much more in our series. Do stay with Huda TV. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.